my UK, we have with us designated hitter Andrew Sosinski, head coach Steve Klein, and second baseman Harrison Pantoli. Coach, if you would, give us some thoughts on the game, and then we'll take questions. Yeah, first of all, uh, hats off to Central Missouri. Unbelievable team. Uh, well coached. I was unbelievable over there. Uh, just, you know, I have a feeling towards them because I played for the Cardinals for a while. So I, you know, seeing those kids out there and listening to them tell me they're from St. Louis and stuff was, it's a good feeling. But uh, uh, just hats off to them. Second of all, our team was just, we just were resilient today and we didn't give up. They they pitched really well. That started for them. Scott, he threw the ball well. Uh, kind of dominated us all game. And then we just hung in there, uh, played some solid defense at times and got some, some big outs. And then we got some clutch hits there at the end. And, uh, it's an amazing game of inches, how things can change quickly. Coach, in about the sixth inning, you were very adamant talking to your, to your dugout about you know, making contact and, and, and doing your job and, and, and that kind of stuff. What were you trying to convey and how do you think they reacted to that? Yeah, I mean, all year I think we, uh, sometimes we, I think we went up there and we just, we let the pitcher get into a good, you know, his mojo and he was punching us out left and right. So I was trying to tell us, hey, we can't give up. We got to keep battling, keep moving, try to keep, you know, fighting, get, you know, don't let him get into a good rhythm. And, uh, you know, he, he struck, I think he struck out the side that inning. And I was just like, hey, we can't quit. We can't, don't give in. We got to, you know, and uh, it worked out perfect for us because a couple innings later, our eighth inning magic kind of came through for us. Andrew, go through that at bat. Um, you, you obviously had to feel like that was a, <laughs> big spot in the game, maybe even it's now or never kind of spot. Go through that at bat and then go through your emotions afterwards because you kind of were a little nah. fired up. <laughs> I mean, it just, it's, I can't, I got to go back to the team. We just don't, we don't give up all year. We've been down so many times and we just push and push and that eighth inning has been magic for us. Third AB, I mean, I didn't try doing too much. I just tried finding my pitch and just put it in play and the Lord answered <laughs> and, it, and it happened. Talk, talk, talk about when you got to first base a little bit. You were I don't really even, excited, weren't you? I don't remember what I hit, but the dugout told me I was just spamming all these celebrations. I just blacked out out there. I was just happy. I got a hit and we scored. And then Harrison, you had the you had the big hit to kind of tie the game a little earlier. Um, how big was that for you guys? Because I think at the time you only had two hits all game. How big was it to break through finally after you know struggling to play as a team in the first game and then early today? Yeah, I mean it was just a great feeling. I mean I was seeing the ball well all day, and I was just not trying to do too much. And he threw a pitch middle in, and I just took it took it to right field like I normally do. And yeah, I mean he was a great pitcher though. I mean his stuff, he had good movement, hit his spots. So hats off to him. But you know, Steve, Harrison. go ahead. Go, go ahead. Harrison, you said that earlier you were talking about how you seen the ball well. Yeah, I mean, same same type of thing. I was just trying to stay stay calm up there and not do too much and find my pitch, and that's what I did. Coach, you had five hits on the game today. Four of them are sitting next to you. <laughs> what was that like going through, staying calm throughout? Oh, I mean, it's 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 frustrating because I know our team can hit, and I think we're just pressing the pedal a little bit too much and trying to do too many things. I don't think we're we're staying with our approach a little bit. At this level now, you're going to see great arms. And usually good pitching shuts down good hitting. And uh, we were fortunate that we just battled. Like I said, Deshaun hit that little, you know, little Texas League bloop, you know, like hop up the middle and we got on and he hit the double down line. And thank God he had speed and he scored on the, you know, that first kind of the second run that we scored there. That's just a, a blessing for that. And then, like I said, the other ways we just scored in the first thing on an air. Uh, Brady Hart's told second base on a, on a hit and run that, Kind of the pitcher threw kind of up, and then it just worked out the way it worked, and we got lucky. And uh, you know, to watch that guy run around the base, I think he was tired. I didn't know if we had any oxygen left, but I was, I was like, man, we don't have oxygen in this. Uh, so, but I was happy for all the guys. The guys, uh, like I said, they just battle. I'm, I'm tough on them all year, and I, I wear these guys out, and they just respond. So I'm happy for them. For all the big plays and the big hits and everything, the biggest play in that game may have been throwing out the runner, trying to steal it. Yep. Could you go through that? I mean, is he that accurate all the time? No, I was hiding in the bathroom. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see the pitch at all. All right. So. Yeah. Andrew, you, you were out there. and it, uh, how, how big? How, just being an ex-catcher, too, and just seeing Landers 
do that in that moment. I mean, he's done it two or three times. Uh, if I can go back through in a year, it just that takes momentum right out, right out of their dugout, and then the van just does a job with the Peyton, and we turn it, and that's game. And then Harrison, the celebration happened. And then they say, oh, 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 it's JK. Everybody get back in the dugout. <laughs> what was that like waiting for the the the, the review? I mean, right away, we, we we asked Miller, were you on? And he goes, I was for sure on. So, I mean, no doubt. He doesn't, Miller doesn't lie. He's going to be so. a cop, too. He's so. going to be a cop. That's he doesn't lie. Honest man. He's honest man. <laughs> and, and you have to celebrate twice, too. Right? Yeah. <laughs> That's all I got. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Starting pitcher Jack Scott, head coach Kyle Crooks, and outfielder Carter Young. Coach, if you want to give us some thoughts on the game and what they play. Sure. Uh, thought Jack gave us a great start. I mean, obviously, he gets into the eighth and uh, gives us a you know great opportunity uh, to to win that game. Uh, Carter got the offense started, you know, in the second or the third inning with the double and. Uh, like to like to have thought that that was going to help our offense kind of get off the snide a little bit and and continue to add and um, you know we just uh, again picked a bad day to have a bad day I think offensively and um, I probably pressed some buttons you know I know that people are going to ask me about I'm happy to happy to answer um, in terms of what we decided to do um, but ultimately you know we you know we feel like or I feel like we probably, you know, have more runs in that in that game for us to have and we just didn't. Jack kept get throwing up zeros for us. Um, and they took some, you know, they got a big hit when they needed to, a uh, big sack fly when they needed it. And those are a couple things that we didn't we didn't do. We didn't execute. So hats off to them uh, and their pitching staff and their coaching staff. They they did enough to continue to keep us off balance and get some weak early contact and get through the middle of that game when I felt like it was ripe for us to, to do some more scoring and um, again, hats off to Jack for continuing to match their zeros as well. But um, yeah, it's it's a bad day to have a bad day. That's why we're sitting here. Um, why did they not allow you to review the stolen base or caught stealing the run? Uh, I guess I was over the 10 second time limit, um, so that was the explanation. Part of, go ahead. Jack, you had ten Ks and only three hits through seven. What was working so well for you today? Uh, I thought that, you know, all my pitches were kind of working. Uh, I had a good feel for everything. So, is that typically how long you stay in a game? Um, no, I I usually stay in the game about five to six. So that was the stretch most majority of the time. Carter, you guys, everybody in the starting lineup today is batting over 320. Mm -hmm. How surprising is it to come here and to have six hits in the first game? I don't know how many did you have today. Seven hits in this game and and really only score what, four runs the entire tournament. How shocking is that for you? Uh, it's definitely shocking. Um, you know, I like to pride ourselves on execution, like Kyle Crook said. Um, he, uh, 
we just didn't do what we were supposed to do, and it kind of came back to bite us. But um, I have full faith in the guys that hitting's, uh, hitting's hard, and we just weren't there this week. Um, but this, that's just baseball. Did you feel like it was one of those situations where you let a team hang around, hang around, hang around, and, it, and it actually it was kind of the same story as mm -hmm. the other night, wasn't it? Yes. Both uh, Connor Wolf and Jack Scott were both throwing up really good um, innings, zeros, zeros, and it's just hard to – really get something going offensively when your pitcher does good and you still don't put anything up. Um, it kind of just feels like you're not really doing anything and it's just hard to get something going after that. Party, you drove in those couple runs in the second inning you were first given around the board. What was it like working against the, the pitcher that was throwing so well for them too? Um, just kind of, it was my second time through, so I already knew what everything, um, I know the pitches he had and kind of the sequencing. So. Um, kind of just relying on the coaches and what I've heard and all the information that I got before. So um, just kind of doing what we've been doing all year and all season, um, just kind of relying on what we did training-wise. Uh, Coach, talk about you know, this being a class and the youngster that they've you know, left here. Um, how are you feeling? Uh, that's a, an emotional question. Thank you. Uh, I, there are so many that have been here for so long. Um, Carter, Cole, Van, Grayson, um, Moscow, uh, Babs, um, there's more. Um, and they've, they've been they're, – they're great players, no question. And to, the two things that I would like to say about them is, is that they worked their ass off to be great players, and they worked and waited, and they saw great players in front of them, and they stayed, and they continued to work, and they didn't give in. They didn't go away. They stayed in the uniform. They came to practice every day, and that's not an easy thing to ask somebody to do. Um, most of these guys are the best players off of their teams, summer and school bowl, and um, when they come to school, you know, that I don't know about the expectation that they have necessarily, but it's it's not always – you know, you're in there from the very beginning to the very end. And, and there is a tremendous number of guys in this class, this guy included, that worked their tail off to be where they're at and did it for five, some six years, if you're talking about Van and Babs, um, to, to create and help, help uphold what, you know, what this program expects. And that's not an easy thing to do. It's a, it's a long period of time to spend with me, as they can attest, I'm sure. Um, it's not easy. Um, but I feel like they held the standard as high as you can hold it. And I think they did it in the most difficult way that you can do it because they had to watch. They had to, they had to learn from other people by not getting reps. They had to understand that their work was still valuable, even if it wasn't going to get results on the field. Um, and eventually it turned into results and eventually it got exactly what they deserved, which was the opportunity to play for what we want to play for here. And, um, you know, I, c I couldn't be more proud of the people and the players that are here that were here with us. And especially those guys that are seniors that are walking out the door because because of how they did it. It is a very different dynamic uh, to be able to do those things and to be able to have that kind of resiliency and that that kind of sisu to see it all the way through to the end when the easier thing to do may not have may have been to not do that. Um, it's a special group of people, uh, and I I cannot overstate that enough. So they should all be sitting here. You shouldn't be listening to me. No, just um, I'm extremely blessed uh, to be a part of the squad um, ever since a freshman. Um, being under Coach Crooks is definitely something I will cherish for the rest of my life. Um, talk about culture here, and uh, sometimes that word can get washed around. But Crooks, he does a great job of just getting – you could be a good ball player, but if you don't fit here, then you don't fit here. And the young men that he, he grows since I was a freshman has changed a lot, and um, utmost respect to him and the entire coaching staff. So, speaks. Yeah, uh, the older guys have been, you know, tremendous on on helping me grow and everyone grow, and it's been really, really fun, and, and I've um, been very grateful that I could I could play under guys like Carter and and all those the older guys, and it's been really fun, and I can't wait for for the next couple of years. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.